In today's video, I've got five fun and easy rum cocktails that you can make at home or in your pubs and bars. I'm gonna be using four of my favorite rums from the plantation range, but feel free to swap these recipes out with your favorite rum. But the common ingredient to all five of these cocktails is falernum. Welcome back, I'm Steve the Barman and I help you have more fun with easy cocktail recipes. Great for you if you're having a party at home, awesome if you're just a home enthusiast, and all shades of magicals if you're a pub and bar and looking to add simple cocktails to your menus. Now as always, this video is chaptered up, which means you can scrub straight to the cocktail recipe that you're looking for, or you can watch the whole video, which would be ace. There'll be a link in the show description below where you can find all the recipes. And also below the video are my new uh, eBooks and online courses, and if you do, make any of my cocktails and use my recipes, take a picture, take a photo of the cocktail, upload it to Instagram, and then tag me at Steve the Barman and I'll share it for you. So then, falernum. What the heck is falernum? Well, essentially, it's kind of a, like a Caribbean alcoholic sugar syrup. Traditionally lime, sugar, and then Caribbean spices such as clove, nutmeg, almond, cinnamon, or ginger. In the UK, you can expect to pay anywhere between sort of 12 pounds and maybe 20 pounds. There's a few different brands available. There's not many, there's about four or five that I know of. I've got two of them here. I've got JD Taylor's Falernum, which is an 11%, uh, so quite low ABV uh, Falernum. It's very subtle in taste. It's citrusy, it's got a slight hint of uh, almond to it and then it's got a very slight hint of clove. And then the other big brand in the UK is the Bitter Truth. It's actually a German brand whereas this is a Bayesian brand, uh, Barbados. This I would say is a lot more spicy, a lot more ginger heavy and also for me personally less citrusy uh, but it is a bit stronger. It's 18% ABV compared to 11% ABV. I would say they are actually quite interchangeable between cocktails. They just bear in mind they will just give you very different finishes. As I say that's going to be a lot spicier and that may be a little bit more citrusy. So just pick the falernum or buy both and then just kind of have a play about, see which one you prefer. Now, just before we crack on, do me a favor, hit that like button, give me a big thumbs up because that helps with engagement and YouTube absolutely loves that. And then in the comments below, I've got a question for you. When it comes to rum cocktails, what is your kind of go-to uh, rum cocktail ingredient? What's that first ingredient you, you pick up other than your rum? Comment below. So the first cocktail I'm gonna make for you is uh, the corn and oil. It's a very traditional falernum cocktail. It's even on the back of J.D. Taylor's Velvet Falernum as their kind of go-to cocktail recipe. Now you know me on this channel, I do like to flip recipes up. However, there is absolutely no point flipping this up. Flipping this recipe up would be saying like, I'm gonna make a vodka and coke, but actually I'm gonna use Sprite instead of Coke. You know, it just comes becomes a totally different thing. So I'm gonna kind of stick to an original-ish. Some people would stir this. In fact, I think on the back of the bottle it says it's a stirred cocktail. I actually do like shaking it down. And the only, some people do this, some people don't. The only like a little addition I do is I actually look, float a little bit of OFTD on the top as well. So very simple ingredients, Bayesian rum, falernum, overproof rum, and then I've got some Angostura bitters. So as I said, as I'm gonna shake this, I'm gonna make this in my cocktail shaker. So the first ingredient is my uh, Bayesian rum. I'm going for 45 mil, one and a half ounces. Uh, you could go 60 mil, but I'm just going 45 simply because of the OFTD that's coming. Then I'm gonna use uh, JD Taylor's Velvet Flernum and I'm going for 15 mil, half an ounce. As you can see as I'm pouring it, hopefully a close-up pick it, it's quite thick and syrupy. And already off the nose, I'm getting those lovely kind of citrusy almond notes. It's absolutely gorgeous, I love this stuff. Right, Angostura bitters, batten and, uh, batten and bruised bottle. I'm going for two dashes in there, one, two. Now as I say, many people would stir this or even churn it up with crushed ice, but I just like doing the whole shake and dump. So give it a good shake. Then I've got a decent sized rocks glass and I'm just gonna do a shake and dump. Pour that straight over the top. Maybe another cube of ice if you want to fill it up. And then I'm going for my OFTD. Oh, that's delicious. That's actually what it stands for, I promise you. I'm just going for 15 mil, half an ounce. And if I get the close up right on that, there we go. You'll be able to see that, look, OFTD. It does stand for old fashioned traditional dark on the bottle, but 69% oh, ABV. And then most of you are gonna garnish that up with a fresh lime. I've just got dehydrated here. Save, save chopping them, don't it? Uh, so I've got the, oh, 
they smell gorgeous, dehydrated lime. Now, because the OFTD is floated on top, you can, you can have a little bit of fun. You can sip it straight out of the glass, or if you want to be a little bit more mellow, sip it for a straw. And that is just so much fun. Armady, citrusy, it is sweet enough. Think of that as a kind of sugar, an alcoholic sugar syrup. It's just such a simple and gorgeous drink, a gorgeous drink, native to Barbados, I think. Well, obviously that hints I used the Bayesian rum. That is a stunner, just simple, stunning drink. Well then, cocktail number two is a very, very simple rum swizzle. I love swizzles, there's no shaking involved. You'll see exactly in a second. So again, kind of like a Bayesian drink. Uh, so hence I'm sticking to the Bayesian rum, but feel free to swap that out. We've got Falernum. Now, funny story behind this, this is actually Muscovado syrup. And the whole reason I was gonna make this cocktail is big shout out to Monin. They sent me um, the, uh, the brand new Monin uh, Muscovado sugar syrup. What did I do? I took it into drink stuff. So I ha haven't actually got it here to do the video. So I've got, I've made some homemade Muscovado sugar syrup. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, and then I've got split citrus here. I've got lemon juice and lime juice. And then I've got Angostura bitters. So this one is going straight into my favorite swizzle glass. I love this. Uh, and as this is the only rum, I'm going for 60 ml double bubble of my favorite Bayesian rum, but any rum, any rum will do. Ingredient two, I'm going quite falernum heavy on this. I'm going for 22 and a half mil, which is three quarters of an ounce. I love the aromas that that falernum gives off. I'm gonna use the other one in a minute, but oh, that is a gorgeous falernum. Right then, Muscovado sugar syrup. I'm going for 15 mil, half an ounce of Muscovado syrup. And then I'm going, which one's this? This is my lime juice. So I'm going 20 mil in total, but I'm doing 10 mil of, um, uh, so a third of an ounce of lime juice. And then I'm gonna do uh, a third of an ounce of lemon juice to go in 10 mil of lemon juice. Then we're going back to the old Angostura bitters. I'm going two dashes for this. I do like uh, quite bitter heavy, so a couple of dashes. And then we're gonna t fill our um, glass two thirds full of crushed ice. Now there's still bugs being in the UK because we can't really get swizzle sticks in the UK. They're like bamboo um, pieces of wood essentially with like four, three, four prongs on the bottom and you kind of do that. Now, bar spoons will do the same thing but they don't look as cool as swizzle sticks. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and get someone to import some swizzle sticks. But essentially you do it between the palm of your hands and you just swizzle up the cocktail like that. And when that's adequate, adequately swizzled, cool, that's a hard word to say, uh, top out with a bit more crushed ice. That'll stop the drink melting too much. Uh, I've got a lovely sprig of mint to garnish, and then I'm just gonna crack out another uh, dehydrated lime wheel. Again, absolutely gorgeous. The rum works a treat. The falernum comes through. The falernum is prominent, but the muscovado really comes up behind it. This is just a, a stun. It's kind of like a rum punch, but it's a swizzle, just cracking. Now for your third cocktail, this is uh, my Mai Tai recipe. This is the Mai Tai recipe that I've used uh, for quite a few years now. I was convinced I had a video about this, but I cannot find it on my channel. Uh, so I thought it'd be great to rock out on this. Now I know my channel is about fun and easy, and this is a lot of ingredients, but trust me, go with me, uh, it really does work. So I've got three rums going on here. Uh, I've got my Bayesian rum, uh, I've got my OFTD, oh, that's delicious. Uh, I've got my Stiggins Fancy, my pineapple rum. I love pineapple notes on a Mai Tai. Now, I flip out the orange curacao. I do love Mai Tais with orange curacao, dry orange curacao, but I love the pineapple vibe. So I swap out my orange curacao for Giffard's uh, Caribbean pineapple liqueur. I've got falernum. I love falernum in a Mai Tai. I'm just gonna bump it up with a slightly, slight touch of orgeat or jeet or jo syrup. Uh, I've got some lime juice and then my bitters. Uh, let's give you the close up on there. My bitters for this, if that's the right way around, are my pineapple and star anise. And that little bit of star anise just sets this whole cocktail off. Now, as I said, I know that's a lot of ingredients. Um, it, look, if you wanna go even basic, just use one rum. One rum instead of these three, but I love the kind of different effects that this gives us. So uh, I'm gonna start off with my Bayesian rum. I'm going 30 mil. Next as we come down the line, we've got our overproof rum, kind of like a dark, Demerara, uh, I'm going for 10 mil, a third of an ounce. Uh, this, I use this instead of like an El Dorado Demerara rum. 10 mil of that, third of an ounce, and then I'm going back to uh, th 30 mil, one ounce of my pineapple uh, plantation, Stiggins Fancy. 
And already the aromas of those are flipping phenomenal. But now we're just taking it up a level. Uh, 15 mil, half an ounce of this Caribbean pineapple liqueur. It's the only reason why I really have this for my ties. Uh, then I'm gonna match that 15 mil with another 15 mil of my falernum, my velvet falernum, half an ounce. Uh, I'll do the orjat, orjit, orjou, orjat. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna call it orjat. Orjit, orjit, I like to be orjit, I like to be common. Uh, 10 mil of that, just kind of like almond notes, just to pep it up a little bit. And then I'm going for 15 mil, half an ounce of lime juice. Uh, you, Some of you might want a bit more lime juice in this. Some of you, I don't think you want any less, but some of you might want a bit more citrusy, but this works perfectly for me. Well balanced, not over sweet. Now I haven't forgotten about the pineapple and star anise bitters. Uh, I'm gonna do my little trick with those. I'm gonna spritz the inside of the glass in a second. So ice up your cocktail shake and then a good hard power shake. Then the glass I'm actually gonna use for this is my kind of julep glass that's ready to go. So a little close up on that, I've got pineapple and star anise bitters. You get the pineapple notes, uh, but the star anise is what I really love about these. So you could use like a perno or an absinthe or something like that, but I love these bitters. So uh, I'm gonna do about six spritzes and that'll be about one pipette of this. Already. Already that aroma is gorgeous. Now you could do a shake and dump, you could use that ice, but I'm just gonna do a single strain. Then I'm just gonna to top up with crushed ice. And then to garnish, I've got a couple of pineapple leaves out of the freezer. And then I've just got a dehydrated pineapple. And that for me is gorgeous. Boozy, punchy, the falernum comes through. But I love the pineapple flip on the orange, orange curacao. For me, that absolutely makes the Mai Tai. Mai Tai traditionalists are gonna say, oh, it's not really a Mai Tai anymore. Fair enough, give it another name, but this is my go-to recipe and I flipping well love it. Right, cocktail four. This is my riff on uh, the jungle hunt. Uh, I've just had a just had another mouthful of corn, oh, I love that. So, uh, the jungle hunt. Basically, I've swapped out um, the rum, so I'm going for pineapple, uh, plantation pineapple, um, Stiggins Fancy. Jägermeister, hoo hoo, bit of Jäger. Uh, we've put J.D. Taylor's Golden Falernum, or Velvet Falernum to bed now. We've got the Golden Falernum, bit of truth, Golden Falernum coming out to play, because uh, I want the next two uh, cocktails to be a little bit more spicier. Uh, I've got some cinnamon syrup. I've got 100% pressed uh, pineapple juice, just supermarket owned, but pressed pineapple juice. I've got lemon juice this time, and I'm keeping with the pineapple and star anise bitters. Now, will this cocktail work with JD Taylor's for learning? Yeah, of course it will, of course it will. Me personally, I just want the extra sort of spicier notes that that one gives off, the ginger kicks. So, uh, we're going 30, wheel, 30 wheels, 30 mil, one ounce of uh, plantation pineapple stickings fancy. I'm gonna match that 30 mil with another 30 mil of Jaeger. I've really come round to using Jaeger in cocktails now. Uh, go and check out my Jaegermeister video. That kind of blew me away. Love it. Then we come on to the Golden Falernum. Uh, so I'm going 15 mil, uh, half an ounce. And already, already you've kind of got, it's even got a slight orange notes to it as well, but just much more sort of punchier in the spices. But anyway, 15 mil, half an ounce of golden falernum. Uh, and then I'm going for some cinnamon syrup, uh, and I just want 10 mil of this, so a third of an ounce of cinnamon syrup. And then which juice is up first? We've got lemon juice, that, so we'll do that first. Uh, I'm going for 15 mil, uh, half an ounce of lemon juice. And then I'm going for 45 mil, one and a half ounces of pressed, 100% pressed uh, pineapple juice. Now your choice on the bitters again, I've, I'm gonna keep the spritz cap on, so I'm gonna spritz the inside of the glass instead, but if you're gonna do that, uh, I'm gonna do two dashes in the cocktail. So if you wanna spritz, uh, if you wanna do dashes, do two, or pipettes, do two pipettes. Anyway, daily workout, half our shape. Now for this, I'm going for that tiki glass, and as I said, uh, two pipettes, which should about, you know, it's gonna be about eight or nine spritzes of these little spritz caps, so uh, I just love the aromas that this gives off. Four, five, six, seven, one for like eight. And that'll be about two pipettes. Then you can strain this over fresh ice if you want. I'm just gonna do a shake and dump just over the top. And top up uh, with any more ice if you need to. And then to garnish, I've just got um, about three sprigs out of my garden. My, my mint's getting a bit past its best before outside the garden. But about two or three large sprigs of mint. 
The Jägermeister plays amazingly well with the rum. I get the pineapple notes coming through. I get a little bit of cinnamon coming through, but then those spices from that golden falernum, the ginger, cloves I'm kind of getting, the aftertaste, really, really nice. Easy going, it's not over strong. You could pep it up with a bit more rum if you wanted to, but this is delicious. Right, and your fifth and final cocktail is my riff on the three dots in a dash. Uh, now again, it looks like a lot of ingredients. Uh, it's actually not too bad. If I've got two rums there, you can bring it down to one rum, but there are two rums I've got, a Plantation OD, um, Original Dark, essentially Bayesian. I keep thinking it's Trinidadian, but Bayesian and Jamaican blend there. Uh, I'm going straight for the Bayesian uh, rum as well. I've got the Golden Falernum, a bit of Truth's Golden Falernum. And just to give it a little bit more spice, I've got a uh, Pimento Dram, okay? All spice, a bit of Truth's all spice uh, liqueur. Gorgeous, so it's gonna give those clove and cinnamon notes even more. Honey syrup, uh, which one's that? L lime juice. Uh, a squeezed orange juice and then Angostura bitters. So cocktail shaker at the ready. Uh, first rum at the ready. I'm going for 30 mil of Plantation OD. I'm then going for 30 mil of my out and out uh, Bayesian rum for this. Lovely, oh, 30, 35, maybe 40. <laughs> Now for the golden falernum, I'm gonna go 15 ml, half an ounce. We'll get all those sort of lovely kind of limey, almondy, ginger notes coming through. And then for the pimento allspice or allspice uh, dram, this bottle will last you ages because you really don't want that much of it. You know, I'm going for five mil. If you start putting 10 mil, 15 mil in cocktails, it's gonna really overpower. So this is gonna last you flipping ages. Um, what we're doing, five mil, it's a bar spoon. Uh, so look, my butt is labelled a sixth of an ounce. <laughs> so a little five mil bar spoon of uh, pimento dram. And then we're going for some honey syrup. So runny honey, uh, 15 mil, half an ounce of honey syrup. Uh, 15 mil, half an ounce of lemon juice. Sorry, I did actually mean uh, lime juice. That is lime. Look, just so just so you know the difference. Look, I don't know if you can see, I've got a little little black dot there on my lemon and no little dot on the line. <laughs> That's how I always tell. So lime juice. <laughs> uh, and then I've got uh, some orange juice. Now, uh, three dots and dash is quite, you know, it's not much. 15 mil normally of orange juice. I'm actually gonna up this slightly. I'm going for 30 mil, one ounce of squeezed orange juice, complete with bits. And then final ingredient is the Angostura bitters. Bearing in mind, we have got some of the allspice going on, so we don't want too much. You can do, but I'm just going for a single dash. Now it's time for your daily workout, so plenty of ice, and then good hard fast shake. And then to serve up, I always come back to this, my juice, I've got loads of other, you won't see them, but loads of other tiki mugs up there. I keep coming back to this one, it's called the juice, I think, <laughs> with a D, D-E-U, juice. Um, anyway, just shake and dump. And then top up with more ice, I've just got some crushed ice left over, so I'm just gonna use that. And then garnish, I'm gonna do a dehydrated uh, orange and also uh, a maraschino cherry because I haven't used them for a few videos. Oh, lovely. Let's get a big juicy one. Juicy maraschino cherry, bit of juice to drizzle in. And then a decent, um, decent orange wheel as well. But as I say, any garnish for this, pineapple, mint leaves, whatever you got. That is gorgeous, simple to drink, proper out and out tiki. The reason why I personally love it so much You've got the rums that come forward. I love the rums. But just coming up there, the honey. I love honey in cocktails. But the honey with the, the honey really does balance the kind of ginger notes and the spice notes coming off the pimento as well. It's just this gorgeous kind of like well balanced there. I think the extra orange juice does make it as well. I don't like it too much with the less orange juice. I think it does need slightly more, but definitely no more than 30 mil. You don't want to go back in 60 mil, 100 mil of orange juice and that. That will just totally ruin it. Uh, so there we go. Let me know in the comments below which which one is your favorite? Which one are you gonna make? Uh, as always, if you haven't done so already, big old thumbs up, that really helps me grow the channel. And also, as always, if you wanna watch more of my content, just subscribe to the channel.